some of your story so people un understand the human side. Welcome to Some Stutter Law, Newfoundland Labrador's first podcast about stuttering. My name is Greg O'Grady, and I am a person who stutters and a co-host of Some Stutter Law, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering, along with my co-host. And my name is Caitlin Mayo. I'm a future speech language pathology student, and I'm Greg's co-host on this podcast. Some Stutter Law mission is dismantling and rebuilding stuttering. Let's start listening. Some Stutter mandate is in the spirit of Newfoundland Labrador humor, robust and frank interactive discussions. Some Stutter Law podcast aims to rebuild confidence and hope for today's and tomorrow's person who happens to stutter by dismantling stuttering myths stigma, stereotypes, and barriers. The objectives of Some Stutter Law podcast are supporting, raising awareness, and increasing understanding and acceptance of stuttering, providing people who stutter, their families, professionals, students, and the general public with current information, research, and resources about stuttering, and promoting advocacy and support for people who stutter. Today, Some Stutter Law welcomes Carolina Azalea, and uh, Carolina is a person who stutters. She lives in Toronto. And uh, so welcome Carolina to our, to some stutter law podcast. So Carolina, would, would you share your, uh, just, just to, you know, share, share a little bit about yourself to our, our listeners. And uh, just, if, if you don't mind, just share a little bit about yourself, your, your lived experience as a person who stutters. Okay. Uh, sure. So my name mm, mm, is Carolina, and I live in Ajax, Ontario, Canada, very near. Toronto, and I've stuttered since I began speaking, and um, my experience with a stuttering are very fast. So as I started to go to school, I first kind of understood that people didn't talk the same as me. And some people wouldn't even bother to get to know me. And that took a, a big toll, but I, I did accept it. Um, and I then began to go to speech therapy as a child at the age of, of nine, because before uh, that time, the 
pediatrician told my uh, family that my stutter was just um a a face and um actually my vice principal sent me to speech therapy and that it changed my entire perspective okay should i say more <laughs> oh okay no we'll ask you some questions now carolina how long were you in speech there before i mean was it only during your earlier like uh did you go to therapy in your, your adolescence adulthood um no it started as and stopped a couple times because my speech pathologist kept on moving and then i didn't have to start again to do fell up a rapport and that for me some people just saw their appeal as to practice to to speak better but for me my speech pathologist my first speech pathologist was Lisa Avery and she took time to discuss my feelings to discuss the teasing the bullying so for me to find somebody else that kind of took the same approach was tough and i didn't find the same but definitely did me some very good speech pathologist just till turning about 22 and then i stopped seeing speech pathologists because the cost and i mean that's a big factor so i it 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 didn't go back to a program till uh till my speech got pretty pretty bad and i decided to go to the wire the pro you know i i'm you know, i'm wondering uh carolina that uh, what you know what advice would you give other other people who stutter 
who are who are seeking speech language pathologists, what advice would, would would you provide them in terms of interviewing them, being comfortable with them, the type of questions to ask? Because I feel that uh, often uh, uh, people who stutter are not that uh, you know they uh, sometimes I think uh, because we're a very vulnerable population, sometimes they feel that we're not that comfortable with interviewing or, you know, just trying to find a fit, what advice would you give? Um, for me, I, I basically um, just got a, a, a feel like, I either felt safe or, or kind of felt scared to sh share vulnerable to sh share. And for me, it I need to discuss um, my uh, uh, thoughts and at the same time practice my speech. Um, and what to say is that Trust your in to shin and just um follow that. And um, at, at talk to people, uh, other people who stutter, and kind of do uh, sh a, sh a shopping, right? Because there's um, many speech pathologists the gist, but there's some that they're just maybe not gonna be the proper fit. So same for sh uh, shoes, right? Some seem very shiny and nice, but they're uncomfortable. So what's the point to purchase something that does and not fit. You, you can push and shove, but don't, don't. Just search, search. And because it's pricey, so find the proper person. I love that comparison with the shoes. I think that's really great. It's it's a great way to think of it because the finding the fit between the clinician and the client is yeah. so important in speech yeah. pathology and in healthcare in general, really. Right, right. Because sometimes people say, oh, well, you know, there's Sam. Okay, sure. Sam's 
fear by, but maybe Sam isn't the proper um, connection to build, to um, get better. And uh, sometimes after you start to see somebody, there'll be a toe and and that person can't take me any further, but that's okay. No, absolutely. And so you mentioned for yourself, uh, something that was really important in a speech pathologist was somebody who addressed the bullying and the teasing and the emotional side of the stutter. How important do you feel that that is in stuttering treatment and how, I guess, how much do you think that it should be encouraged? Because I know not every speech pathologist addresses yeah. that. Well, for me, that changed me, those pep talks, um, the fact that Lisa let me explain the taunting, the chanting, the choking that kids did and that she supported me to learn how to spawn back. So even though she's just supposed to teach me the skills, but to even open up my mouth to say such, I first needed the confidence, the support. Um, because for me personally, school was super, super tough. You know, uh, has 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 your your has has your starting. <laughs> Uh, uh, has has your stuttering affected your uh, personal and and, and and your professional and personal and professional life, Carolina? Overall, I mean, and, and um, how how have you handled this overall? Person, uh, you okay. know. Okay. Uh, sure. So I have to say that after I, I, I did start to go to that speech uh, 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 therapist, um, she, she actually asked us if anybody would be in interested in participating in a 
documentary about stuttering and as a kid till today I enjoyed acting and drama so I uh, uh, Dishing and dining dining kids be for me also did and they chose the people, but then the director met me, met me and then decided to put me to be the starring child and then that through the documentary that changed me totally. Yes. Yes, in, that in, totally in, did. We, we all know that as people who stutter that anxiety is associated with stuttering and there's various degrees of stuttering. Like, uh, would who uh, would you know would you mind sharing about your feelings about anxiety and overall is anxiety is does anxiety still affect you a great deal oh i mean sometimes such as today where you know we are recording this podcast and it, it for sure does make me a more uh, conscious regarding regarding my speech for sh sure and what else try to do is to journal journal or talk to somebody that stutters and discuss and discuss my and Concerns. You know, I, I often ask myself the question, and and, and uh, you know, I wouldn't mind getting your your thoughts on this. How you know? How do you describe, or can you describe the anxiety you feel as a person who stutters? You know, um, this, you know, this is a sixty four dollar question. <laughs> yeah. So I I believe. Leave um for me that I'll sometimes if, uh, think about the worst scenario. And then that'll uh, affect my speech because you, you're kind of not um, saying positive 
self talk, right? So yeah, so sometimes when I have to call somebody a store that can be like, okay, so now this person, if I stutter, they'll think, oh, is she's crank calling or some thing similar to that you know uh, the you know uh, the the way that i uh, uh, describe anxiety for me is that you know, granted, we you know we you know we all have our fears about certain situations. Uh, when, when I'm stuttering, our anxiety is higher. But I think overall, for me, it's almost like it it is a tingling throughout the whole body, and uh, you want to leave you know leave you know leave you know, leave your skin sort of thing. It's a tingling, and it is so and okay. and, and this is generalized generalized anxiety through the whole body and that's this and then sometimes because you're so anxious you have trouble concentrate even on what what, what you're trying to do or on on your yeah, therapy for sure yeah. for sure so even such as as i'm speaking i say carolina man you're stuttering being so bad stop it but i'm like i'm feel nervous and you know and yeah so you kind of you know it happens right <laughs> yeah uh like in terms of a comfort level carolina how, how you know what what level of comfort or acceptance do you have with your stuttering at the moment in terms if you had a from one non-acceptance 12 acceptance how would you uh, what number would, would you give yourself oh you mean normally acceptance so acceptance can be like a number uh a number nine but sometimes right you'll kind of be sad be like oh why stutter right but it's a part of me it kind of is sh sh shaped me and it made me a better person so would would you change a change in anything about your your, your stuttering then because it, it's it's always nice to hear like a, a positive aspect and you you know you you know you know you you know you come across as being a very positive person you know, would would you agree? Or? I know, you know, sometimes you uh, 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 think if I didn't stutter, I'd be acting or you know some sort of entertainment um but then at
the same time, I'm a better person in terms of my job and the type of care and um, the type of person who I am to family to friends and I'm compassionate empathetic and 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 so I can't negate the gifts that stuttering gave I, I, I'm wondering now, like on, on a daily basis, how, how much time do, do you think about your stuttering in an average day? Is it constantly on your mind or does, does it I mean, consume you? No. No, but sometimes when uh, people uh, can't be paid, Shint, yeah, for sure, that'll bother me, that'll make me upset, but no, that does not consume my day, no. But if um, somebody does some thing that can be seen as not kind, I'll for sure tell that person, tell their boss, so that the following person who stutters it, it will not face the same. As a, as a person who who stutters, do do you feel that? We, you know, like uh, we, you know, we still have a long way to go to educate uh, the public to understand and to be aware of stuttering. I still feel that there's a definite knowledge gap there in the general public about stuttering. I, I, we. Uh, of that I've seen the gap, but that people who stutter must stand in the gap. And, you know, Every 
We did. No, but um, we also should share the responsibility of educating the public and not it just say that you know speech pathologists should or the media uh, should but in our own uh, world, let's sh uh, share so people can be better what advice would you have or what would you say to somebody who's wanting to be an ally and wanting to learn more what would you say to them be patient be kind and don't problem solve. So such as uh, if, 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 if finishing my sentences, ask before proceeding. And um, yeah, just just to be present. Yeah. Also, what what advice would would you give to you know to two people that are going for job interviews, which is one of the the, the biggest uh, job interviews. <laughs> job interviews. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes. Very, very tough. So tough. I is said before that I it did go back to uh, uh, therapy at my low point. And for me, my point was one day that my job interview you took four hours four and that just left me uh, done, done, and just exhausted. And um, the person that was interviewing me a part of the panel said Carolina it's 
okay to ask for help. And the minute she said it, bawling, bawling and bawling. Because I tried to show people, oh no, I got it. Oh, this stutter, this has nothing on me. I, I'm better, right? And oh boy, it didn't matter that I pushed and pushed and that my throat got so sore, but no, push, Carolina, push, push, push. And she, she, she taught me that it's okay to ask for support. And um, she, she, she also disclosed her disability to me. And that really moved me. At ten. So sometimes we have to stop and be in proud. You know, you know, it's a stutter. You know, no, it's tough. It's okay to say so, right? It's okay to tell somebody to prepare for my interview time to take more time to ask to bring in notes and to just um yeah just depending but we can ask for accessibility Yes. Yeah. And some people still say no. But there's a, a what's it called now, guys? Um, there's a, a law that it says that people with a, a disability can't be discriminated and I did um, seek Council and fought that, and the whole company apologized. Yes, 
not permitted, not allowed, mm. not allowed. No, no, and no, mm. right? Now, I, uh, oh, I have one last question for you. Sure. In, in terms of disability, I know that uh, there's a 50 50 uh, pros and cons about people who started uh, considering studying a, a disability. What are your thoughts yeah. about whether studying yes. is a disability or not a disability? <laughs> yes. Um, this, you know, uh, this, you know, this is another can... $75 question. <laughs> so, speaking for me, I see a stuttering as being a disability. Um, sometimes my speech can be better, but I feel protected to say that if I do need support that I can just tell my company that due to my disability, I need support. So today, my supervisor, my manager, they are both super supportive. They'll ask how they can support me and I did do a presentation to share to my team about stuttering and uh, we did a small test and then everybody got to understand stuttering better. And that also made me feel safer. Yeah, so it's, it's safe to tell them, oh, would you mind to call Bob? Because two days a bad speech day, you know, yeah. And so they're so supportive, but it's due to me teaching people, sharing, right? So sometimes, see, that's the thing to share so people can be better supporters too so you're you're right because i mean the so i mean this you know this you know this goes back to something else you you know you know you mentioned earlier i mean you know people people who sort of have you know, have the responsibility to 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 stand up and educate people about stuttering and i think that you know you know through this AI education, uh, people you know learn more. They you know they you know they understand more, and it you know makes the work environment, the personal and the social environment, professional environment, much more easier to to uh, yes. to I guess 
address and handle. So, but really, it's, it's, it's left to, up to us as people to who start to educate. You know. Yes. Yes. And mm -hmm. it, it, and and share personal right. Tell us some of your story so people un understand the human side, right? So sometimes people say cancer, this and this and this and such, but somebody that shares the struggle, it, 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 it uh, facts the the sinner in kind of a more a meaningful manner. You know, as you know, <laughs> as people who who stutter. Share you know, you know, share their own you know personal lived experiences with employers, with families, the general public. We you know we you know you know we also build confidence, and uh, you know you you know you you know you come across as a as a very confident person who who stutters and and. You know, I, I, Oh, I applaud you because it's it's obvious that you have you know you know you you know you you know you have done a lot of self reflection, soul work, and just you know just to 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 come as far as you you have. So congratulations, and you know you you know you you know you're also an excellent role model for us. Okay, thank you. No, but still, there's a lot of bad. Days. There's lots, but um, you have to see the uh, brighter side. Um, your circle of support. Talk to people. Share. See sharing. That's the. Uh, theme to share because lots of people it keep stuff bottled right and they bottle it and it's like the bottle is like full and then it's like bam right so it's better to share you pick proper people though safe people, people that are caring, but um, those people can share the b b burden. You know, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's wise words of wisdom. Pick your safe people to share it with, to share your emotions and feelings with. Safe people. Yeah. Safe people, because there's a lot of people, but safe people, not a lot. There's not a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's been a, a nice catching up with you. Yes, yes, yes. For sure, guys. Thank you so much for... Uh, 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 me. Take care. Thanks a lot. It was nice meeting you. Yeah. Some Stutter Love, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering has so much to talk about. Let's start listening.
This has been an episode of Some Stutter Law. Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stutter really some stutter law is Hosted and produced by Greg O'Grady, Caitlin Mayo, Emily Murphy, Dr. Paul did. Decker and Luca Dino. Some stutter law. Is available. Anchor, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, and Radio, Radio. Radio Public. You can also check out the Some Stutter Law channel on To ask a question in a send us a comment to or suggest in suggest in or just to get in touch find us online at some stutter podcast on Instagram or at some stutter la some stutter la pod on Facebook. Uh, uh, thanks for listening. Bye.